And thanks for the time, and I will let the mayor uh, close with a couple of remarks. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I want to begin by thanking the municipality team that did all the hard work. They've unfairly been castigated during this process, but they're a team of professionals, and I think it was unfortunate that they had to catch slings and arrows. They worked hard, they are diligent, and I would put them up against any team comparable in the country, and you should be proud that they work for this city. I also want to thank all the testifiers, many of whom I did not agree with. I think it's important that when the public comes forward that we, as elected officials, listen to what they have to say. The information that they're proceeding with isn't always accurate. The conclusions that they urge us to reach are not always the conclusions that we will reach. But it is important in a democracy that we address the concerns that they raise, the genuine concerns that they raise. And there were many genuine concerns, and we will continue to address them. But it is the nature of leadership that you have to make decisions with imperfect information under uncertain times. And we have reached a juncture where you need to make a decision. We do not have the luxury of later. We have the necessity of now. We do not have the luxury of later because we have a COVID pandemic. We have to spend these resources by the end of the year. That is not to say that we'll necessarily follow through and make these purchases. The due diligence is still required. But we have to begin proceeding now. Lives literally depend on it. If we cannot provide shelter, people will die. And the origins of the Anchorage shelter system came about because people were dying on our streets. We are not going back there. The necessity of providing housing is particularly acute in this time of COVID because we've been able to keep the homeless population safe from COVID. And as they stay safe, it inhibits the spread of the disease, which keeps the general population safe. So we have the necessity of ensuring that that population has access to housing. Will this solution help everybody? No. There was no pretense that it would. Is this the only component of a, a homeless plan, of the homeless plan? No, it is not. But this is the piece that we have to decide upon now. And homelessness touches all of us, the people on the street and the camps. It touches the neighborhoods. It touches the providers. And it has a profound impact on the character of this city. I heard over and over again stories of how homelessness had affected individuals in an adverse way. I heard uplifting stories of people who work with the homeless on a daily basis. But if we want to change the dynamic, we have to change what is going on right now. And there are no other proposals out there. When people say we should study this some more, we have studied it. People from Anchorage have traveled across the country. They studied best practices. They folded those best practices into the proposals that exist. And you should have every confidence that what is be being proposed and what will be initiated will adhere to the highest standards. We hope the assembly holds the administration to those standards. We hope the public holds us to that standard. But I've also heard over the last five years through countless, and I say countless in a literal way, not a metaphorical way, homeless committee meetings that we have to do something. Many of you have sat through many of those hearings. You heard those same pleas. Do something. Well, the time is on you to do something now. And we, we have reached the point where not acting is a choice. Not committing to move forward with these purchases is a choice. If you think the status quo is adequate, if you think the status quo is what the public wants, then vote no. 
But if you think that we can improve public safety, we can take a step towards reducing the number of people who are homeless, if you think that making these choices will help protect us from COVID, help make our community safer, then vote yes. It's a stark and clear choice to me. These are not easy votes. I understand the weight of having so many people come and testify. But I also have seen and heard so many people in support. The emails, the people who understand the issue intimately. These are, this is going to be a hard vote for many of you. But I urge you to support this ordinance because it will make a difference, it will make us safer, and I think, perhaps most importantly, it answers a moral responsibility to do something. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Beth Abisror. Go ahead, my name Beth. is Beth Abisror, and I have been here two whole nights, and I have watched on the live stream and TV the rest of the time and heard all of the testimony. This was supposed to be just one night of a meeting. It has taken five nights to get this done. Why? Because this is what happens when you show the people that you will not represent them. So when you will not speak for us and represent us, which is what we elected you to do, we are forced to represent ourselves. Look at how incredibly inefficient that was. Five days until 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. to finish one meeting. That should show you that this is broken right now. And you really need to think about that. We voted for you to represent us. That's what was supposed to happen. It hasn't happened yet. And the reason we've continued to come out is because in response to our testimonies and our emails, especially the emails, we have received responses back that have said, thank you for your opinions, your stories, your concerns. I'm still voting yes. I still support this. I still trust the administration and I trust that they have good intentions. That's not good enough for us. I'm sorry, it's just not. And there's been a big miscommunication. Everyone keeps talking about a plan. The people who are opposed say, I don't like this plan. There is no plan. I haven't seen a plan. And the people who are in favor, they say, I love this plan. We have to help them. I'm in favor of this plan. We're talking about two totally separate things. The Anchor at Home plan is a project. It's an introduction. It's an idea. If you brought that into school as a project, your teacher would say, this is wonderful. Look at this beautiful presentation. I love it. If you brought it to the bank to get funded, they would tell you, it's a good start, but now you have to write a business plan. And then I'll decide if it's worth funding. You've brought this to us and asked us to fund it. And we're telling you no. Good idea. We, don't, we love the basic idea. We don't love how you're doing it. We don't want to pay for it yet. You haven't shown us the reason that we should pay for it. So that's what we're asking for. We're asking for a business plan. Thank you for your testimony. You're welcome.